Hello, my name is Ellen McCarthy. Um, I'm one of the advocates that work for Power. Um, and throughout my life on and off, I've worked in advocacy, um, supporting people with either learning disabilities or um, with mental health issues. So that's me. And um, this week it's Mental Health Awareness Week. Uh, so I've met Ellen um, outside in nature because that's the theme of, of Mental Health Awareness Week this week. So we're outside in nature having a, a socially distanced chat. Ellen's agreed to share her story about her experience of um, bipolar. So can you tell me a bit about how um, and when you were first um, you first experienced symptoms, Ellen? Um, I've probably since I was 15 had mental health issues. If you like, my doctor first prescribed me amitriptyline. But it was only really sort of, it started to get out of control in my 20s um, to the point where when I was 25, um, I was having a nice manic phase and I was walking down the M1 because um, I decided that I wanted to go to London. Um, at the time I didn't drive, so the best way for me to get there was to just follow the M1. So I was on the hard shoulder and the police came and picked me up and said hello, it was about two o'clock in the morning. Oh my gosh. And, so, and what was your mood at that point? My mood had been spiralling. When I look back on it now, I can see that um, it was, I, could, I was a prisoner of my moods um, and didn't know from one day to the next how I was going to be feeling. Um, my head got more and more buzzy as time went on. I started getting out of control. I started, I think within a year I was 21,000 in debt. Um, I'd got two children. I used to go off and visit people here there and everywhere no regard for the children no regard for friends um and became quite arrogant with it the the only good thing that came out of it was that as the kids were little I went back to university and studied and um I came out in the end I've got two degrees uh, <laughs> because the good side of mania is that you never need to sleep um so I was able to raise two children under the age of four and as a single parent and um and get my first class as well and I was rather annoyed with the other one because it was a two one so. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like things really reached a peak for you so what what happened at, at that point yeah so what happens is you 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 just become increasingly out of control spending money um your relationships go to pot and so you start you start living in a very chaotic life and and it becomes very painful emotionally and I just made a very rational choice that this was just too painful for everybody, including my kids. So I made the rational choice that actually I was going to kill myself because it was better for everyone. The children could go and live with their father. I wouldn't have to put up with this pain anymore. Um, and it was a very rational choice so that I made. I can remember doing it. Um, and so I took the pills. Um, and then about 20 minutes after I took the pills, I panicked because um, I just thought, oh, my God, I don't think I've taken enough. Um, and the worst thing of all would have been to have survived, but to have survived with some kind of brain damage. So I bizarrely rang the Samaritans um, for some advice on how I could get hold of some more pills because this was about two o'clock in the morning. I spoke to this lovely guy on the other end of the phone, um, gave him my address because I thought he would be able to get some to me. But instead, two lovely men came knocking on the door and um, said, uh, well, if you, you know, if you want some help, you need to come with us. And actually, they turned out to be from Queen's Medical Centre and off I went <laughs> in their ambulance. Um, I'm really glad that your attempt wasn't successful. So um, am I. And, and did it lead, did your hospitalisation lead to a diagnosis? Yeah, so I was in, um, I was put on a section two, which is when you volunteer to um go in and i was in for three weeks um and um at the time when i was in when i was taken in and i was in casualty um i had a lovely locum psychiatrist who said to me have you ever heard of bipolar and if one of my degrees is psychology I, I had heard of bipolar but didn't really associate it with myself and he said the symptoms that you've told me are classic signs especially the mania um he said and the good news is that we can't get rid of it but we can make you you know you can have a good life and we can give you treatment to help you with it which was such a relief because I'd been living with this for 10 years um so I then went and had my little visit my little holiday 
in Queens and um, they you basically just they take you off all your meds and so you bounce around and they watch you while you bounce around the wards um, and then they can formulate and put a plan together for you and I had a wonderful psychiatrist called Dr Alan Lee who um, is retired now but um, he really really helped me but I was so scared. My primary fear was at the time was that my children would be taken away from me because the stigma was so huge back then. This is the year 2000 um, that I just thought my children would be taken away from me. So it was a very scary time. Yeah. And, and it, you know, that's quite a story. Would, would you say getting a diagnosis and having that treatment helped? And, you know, what are your thoughts now on, on having bipolar? How has it affected your life? To be able to be given a diagnosis means that you aren't making it up and it's so important to feel validated and feel that what you're saying is truth. Um, one of the downsides of the depressive side of bipolar is that you hate yourself and, you, and, and you're hard on yourself. And so to get a diagnosis and say, no, there is a reason why you're feeling like this is so important. And I have to say, I have had really good mental health services here in Nottingham um, that have really helped me to survive and thrive. It's not been easy. There's been other issues that have happened in my life, but the mental health support that I've had has enabled me to cope with that. Oh, that's brilliant. Thanks, Ellen. It's, it's really lovely to, to hear your story and hear that, you know, you, you are surviving and, and thriving and, and you're Absolutely. a great example of why we need to talk about mental health yes. and, and why we need to lose that stigma. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome.